Good morning to you all here at Sherman Baptist Church. Okay, can you LB3. hear me? Thank you so much, uh, Sherman Baptist Church, Pastor Bob, for having me come down and speak to you today about uh, an important ministry, I think. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say that I'm a full-time missionary right here in Northern Kentucky. And uh, we're always sending missionaries out to Haiti and Honduras and different places, and that's great. You know, Child Evangelism Fellowship has uh, missionaries in, in every continent and almost every country uh, on planet Earth right now teaching children. So I know all about that mission. But you know, just as I was talking to Pastor Bob this morning when I came in, uh, he has such a heart uh, for missions to not to necessarily go overseas, but to the people in America. And my mission is to the 11 counties. It's actually 11 counties in northern Kentucky. Uh, where I'm the local director over trying to start good news clubs and five-day clubs here to reach the unchurched children uh, in our churches and and I just again I'm so is this picking up am I getting can you hear that okay just maybe it's me but my wife Sandy is here with me today she helps me in the ministry and she also watches our grandkids uh, so we have pretty full-time duty trying to go out and, and reach the unchurched children in the schools. When I first got introduced to, to Good News Club over in Indiana, uh, my grandson had started attending a Good News Club, and this was only about six or seven years ago. And I was asked to come out and visit the club, and when I went out to the school to visit and see what was going on, I thought, wow, you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, talking about the blood of Jesus right here with the children. You're praying with the children and you're reading from God's word. And I thought, wow, what an awesome opportunity to be able to do that. Because most of the people you talk to will say, well, the you know, prayer's been taken out of schools and the Bible's been taken out of schools and we've taken the Ten Commandments out of schools. But I'm here to tell you that right now, the door is still open, we don't know for how long, to go into the public schools to preach the good news of Jesus Christ to the children. And that's what we do. Let's pray right now as, as I get kind of get started. I want to give you a little introduction. And I'd just like to go to the Lord and ask Him to help us. Thank you, Lord, uh, for your word that never fails. We thank you, Lord, for this church, uh, Sherman Baptist Church. Lord, I pray for the pastor here and the teachers, the leaders, the deacons, all the congregation, Lord, uh, for even allowing me to come. But I pray for them, Lord, that you would bless them and help them to follow you. I pray, Lord, that we would all learn to be servants of the Most High God, seeking the needs of others. Lord, I praise you that you are God, you are holy, you are our creator, and Lord, I praise you that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. I praise you, God, that you have commanded us to go and to teach the gospel and to all the world, and that you give us the power to go and do that. Help us today Lord, to see the great need of the boys and girls here in northern Kentucky. And Lord, that we may show them the true and living God through your son, Jesus. And we pray in his name. Amen. As how many of you, let me just ask, I like to ask when I go to churches, I've, I've spoken in many churches around northern Kentucky and, and many of them are partnering already doing good news clubs and, uh, and some of the schools. But how many of you in here I trusted Jesus as your savior from sin before age 15. If you would be, well, wow, yeah, that's uh, many. And, and some, some have, uh, some of the kids that just went back, I'm sure some of them have trusted Jesus too. When I look out, we see this huge statistic of kids that, uh, people that trust Jesus or become Christians when they're very young. Pastor Bob, I know his testimony because I've heard it before. My testimony is very similar in a sense that I wasn't church when I was growing up and I did not come to know Jesus until I was 39 years old, same age as he was. When I was listening to one of his sermons the other day, I thought, wow, thanks for that connection, Lord. But, you know, I'm so thankful to have believed on Jesus and he saved me at that later age because, you know, the, uh, we, we look at statistics and we don't see a lot of people coming uh, to Jesus after 
the age of 25 or 35. Yes, I know you always hear the story, we saw a baptism this morning. But you know, there's, the percentage is very small. So in other words, going to the children while they will believe, before they've been tainted so much by this world, and giving them an opportunity to believe, then they will believe in Jesus. You know, we, we have a great responsibility as Christians, the greatest divine responsibility on the planet, and that is to go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we said in the church, you know, week after week we come in, and, and sometimes I just don't think we feel, you know, competent to go out. We say, well, that's Pastor Bob's job, or that's the deacon's job. But, you know, the Bible absolutely tells us that it's every Christian's job to go and share the good news of Jesus with your neighbor, or with a friend, or someone. So, at Child Evangelism Fellowship, we actually come in and we teach and train uh, people to go into these good news clubs how to share their faith. Now, I can say we go and teach them how to share the faith with little children, and sometimes people say, oh, that's just cute, you know, we've got a cute little club here, it's called the Good News Club. Folks, that's not what it's about. It's about eternal life. When we go and we share this powerful Word of God with children, it's because it's the same message that saves you. I think as the reading today in Matthew 1 through 10 talked about receiving the kingdom of heaven, you must become like a little child, the Bible says. You can't enter unless you become like a child. And when I look at children today, when I go out in Good News Clubs, or I look in your church and I see a 10-year-old, and I think in 10 short years, and many of you in here that are older know how fast that 10 years goes by, they're going to be married, having kids, driving vehicles, working. They're going to be running and, and, and hopefully helping uh, in your local church, but that's that's just a grown-up. It's just not quite grown up yet. So it's important that we go out and we share the good news. And as we look at our world, it's growing more and more evil day by day. I think you all will agree to that. Uh, some think, uh, some people in the, in the world think that the world is actually getting better. I, I don't really see that myself. So at CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship, we stay focused on the gospel message. That is our purpose when we go uh, our ministry. Let me tell you just a little bit about and we'll watch a video right after this. But CEF has been blessed with 79 years uh, in the ministry of reaching children world, worldwide. And this came about by our founder and president actually not believing that children could be saved. And once he, once he understood that, God put him on his back and did some miraculous things in his life. And he realized that children could believe. He dedicated his life to going out and reaching children with the gospel. And he laid his hands on a globe. This is a long story short. And he prayed for an army of volunteers that God would raise up an army of volunteers to go and reach children everywhere in the world. And that was 79 years ago. And last year, Child Evangelism Fellowship... Uh, through our Good News and Five Day Club programs, we're able to reach 19.9 million children with face-to-face -face Gospels. And not over the radio, not over the TV, a teacher teaching a child that Jesus is the way to heaven, the only way to heaven. And uh, so, so that's pretty cool to me. But you know, my ministry, as I bring it back in, is being called to Northern Kentucky. My heart is to reach the children right here in Northern Kentucky. The Good News Clubs is an awesome program that God has, uh, has honored and, and allowed us to do. And we've got a short video I want to show. Uh, if it's, is it ready? Okay. And it shows a little bit of what a Good News Club looks like. The times that we live in, there's so many kids out there that know nothing about not only church, they don't know anything about Jesus. And if the church is not reaching them, then they'll never be reached. Relationships are being built through good news clubs. Truth is being shared. What they learn, first of all and foremost, is the gospel. There's a mission field right here. There's a mission field at the schools around you. And someone has to go. Someone has to go. It's a beautiful thing to see the lives of children transformed by the Word of God. This is the passion of Child Evangelism Fellowship, to evangelize and disciple children in God's Word and establish them in the local church for Christian living. I can't thank CEF enough for their ministry to our church. We saw how much uh, potential there was. 
to minister. CEF is an international ministry that's prepared and eager to help your church engage in the Great Commission. Imagine your church members participating in this effective ministry, reaching children for Christ in your local public elementary school. Well, the Good News Club is an opportunity for us to reach kids who aren't being churched, and children appreciate the Good News Club. They learn that Christ came to save sinners, and it impacts their life. In addition to schools, Good News Clubs are also held in homes, community centers, churches, and apartment complexes. We're excited that since 2004, the number of children enrolled in the Good News Club ministry has more than doubled. It's high energy and fast paced. They feature Bible lessons from both the Old and New Testament, missionary stories, songs, prayer, memory verse activities, and review games. I learned wonderful ways to present the gospel, not only through the Word of God, but through music and through song. And it's the Word of God that's changing the hearts of these kids, and that's what CEF gives them, the Word of God. As a pastor, I was delighted. When your church chooses to adopt a school, your church members assume the responsibility for conducting a weekly club in that school. CEF will provide all the training, curriculum, and support you need to make your club a success. I will encourage all the pastors up there to look and see the difference they can make in your congregation. Through the training, which is very excellent and very comprehensive, they've helped our members into having much more self-confidence and even joy in helping these kids. The enthusiasm in the life of a believer who has never even spoken about Christ outside of the church. I've noticed such a tremendous burden lifted off of people. This ministry to public school children is open to all Christians willing to be trained. Equal access has been granted by the U.S. Supreme Court. On June 11, 2001, God opened up the door of every elementary school in America. Now we have greater liberties and opportunities than ever before. And every school is an open opportunity for evangelism. Whether you're a high schooler, a parent, or a senior citizen, God can use you in this exciting ministry. Christian teachers are no exception. They have been granted the right to teach Bible curriculum on their own campus as well. I, I know the children need this. You're dealing with eternity with these children, and they need to hear this. Imagine helping the school children that you already know develop a lifelong relationship with God. The children say they enjoy the program. There are dozens of kids running to the auditorium every Tuesday. With so many children hearing the good news of Christ, it's not long before parents are impacted as well. There are several families, especially in our Spanish department, that are coming to church as a result. We're talking about families that are coming to church as a result of the Good News Club. Take the first step and help your church members engage in the Great Commission. Go to cefonline.com slash for the church. The training, members of our church that, that have been through that, we turn them loose with the gospel and see them grow, see the children evangelize. It helps us fulfill the Great Commission. At CEF, we train the local church to go and share the gospel. In the, in the book of Romans, in Romans 1.16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Uh, this is where the power is. The power is in that spoken word when we go out and we speak it to children. Uh, we're just told to go. We're dispensers of that word. Um, it's not a huge commitment. As he was saying, it's about an hour and a half a week for six to seven weeks if you want to have a party close. Six weeks typically is the curriculum. Six Tuesdays for an hour and a half to teach the children, to invite them to come to your church, but more importantly, to go out to where they're at. You know, we as a church don't get many opportunities anymore to go out and, and stand on the street corner. I was down in Jamestown, Kentucky last week, and uh, we were at the little shopping mall there with a the Kroger's and a Kmart, and there was a street evangelist out there. He had a microphone. He was standing there by himself. It was hot, almost 100 degrees, and he was out there preaching the gospel. And I thought, boy, you know, that's just so hard to do. But you know, when children are in a place like that, we, they're already there, and 
they just stay after school for an additional hour and a half and go right into the cafeteria or gymnasium or wherever you set it up with a school to have this club, you're going to where the children already are. And right up the road here at Critton and Mount Zion, is anyone familiar with the Good News Club or go there? Okay, back here. Uh, you know, Renee and Paul Fox, uh, I met with Gardnersville Baptist Church, and Renee used to be one of our committee members also to go reach the children. Uh, since then, she is too busy right now, uh, but she started a Good News Club there about a year and a half ago, and last semester there were 85 kids staying after school. They actually had to cut, the, cut it off because there were so many and they didn't have enough volunteers, so many kids. Isn't that amazing? You can have another church service in the public school and invite those kids into your homes, invite those families to come in. So that, but more importantly, well, the gospel is going out, but 17 of those children trusted on Jesus as the first time for their Savior in the public school. Doesn't that amaze? That, that just amazes me. Uh, oh, that, that's so amazing. But it, it's not just a cute little Bible club. We go on purpose to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we do it. We don't apologize for the gospel because it is God's way to save. We never will. You read earlier in Matthew 1 through uh, 18, 1 through 10, that God shows his heart for reaching children. The Old Testament commanded people to teach their children always so that they would not be lost in, in another generation. And we see how that, what's happened throughout the years when, when generations walk away from teaching the children about God. You know, I wanted to mention also in one of those verses in Matthew 18, 6, it uses the word believe there. Jesus was talking about for one of those little ones to believe, and he was talking about to lead them into sin, but the word believe that he uses there is saving faith. In other words, Jesus was talking to the disciples in the crowd about children who could believe, put their trust in Jesus as Savior. And out at CEF headquarters, we have a huge millstone out in our, our plaza, our, our, our flag plaza, where we, we pray for all the nations of the world and the children there. Uh, but that's a, a very near to my heart scripture there. So the same word is used in Acts 16.31 where it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Saved means to believe. Eternal life is what that scripture was talking about there. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, I like to read, as we read from the Bible to the children, we always teach to read open Bible too, so I like to read from my Bible. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You are the witnesses. You know, Jesus was appointing them to go out and appoint others. You are now sitting here as appointed by Jesus to go out and to share that powerful message. And yeah, you can say, where's my Jerusalem? Where's my Judea? I think it's pretty obvious that it's, it's right here. Uh, sometimes we send missionaries out to different places in the world. But what about the mission right in your backyard? Because I'm going to tell you a few statistics about right in your backyard, and you're going to shake your head and go, it can't be. But it's the truth. We do, we do a lot of research on this. But Sherman Elementary would be a really good place to start in your Jerusalem. And, and the kids that come from the surrounding area. And God has called me to the lost children in northern Kentucky. Here's a few statistics. In northern Kentucky, well, this, this is a nationwide statistic. So in some places it will vary. And you'll say, well, we're in the Bible Belt, Mike. It's a little different here. And you're probably right. But we know that 80% of the children on any given Sunday morning are not in church. 80%, 8 out of every 10. So there's only 2 out of 10 that are in church. And of that 20%, of children that are in church, that includes a mosque, a synagogue, or whatever people call church nowadays. Uh, you know, and, and then only 3% of that 20% are in evangelical churches and hearing the gospel so that a child can understand it. It's just, it amazes me. You know, children are the most neglected people group on the planet when it comes to evangelism. Uh, and I have to state that because a lot of people say, well, we take care of our kids and we don't neglect our kids. But when it comes to evangelizing, because we're all about going out with missions and evangelizing adults. But children are the most neglected worldwide when it comes to evangelism. And that's the truth. Yet the most receptive to the gospel are guess who? 
the children, 85% of children from age 4 and 14, when given, that's where when kids learn about Jesus and believe. So, Dr. Paul Rood, I don't know, I'll quote a couple of people here. He said, uh, he's, 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 he's in, in heaven now, uh, he's gone, but he said, if I had my life to do over again, I would devote it to child evangelism. The next great revival will be a children's revival. If I deal with 20 adults, I am usually able to win one to Christ. But if I deal with 20 children, 19 of them will believe. And you know, I've proven this myself as I've went out. To, I'm not sure I can lead 19 out of 20. But children will believe because they have a great uh, faith to believe in something young. Now the world's going to teach them and have them believe in all kinds of things later on. So they're going to start believing. At age 6, a child will have the greatest faith they ever have in their life. Uh, that's by James Dobson, you know, a child psychologist. So they're going to believe in something. And by the time they're 13 years old, their mind is made up. What they believe at 13, they're going to, most of them are going to believe the rest of your, their life. So that's why it's so important to reach them while they're young. Warren Wiersbe said, when a child of God looks into the Word of God and sees the Son of God, he is changed by the Spirit of God into the image of God for the glory of God. I get to see this all the time. I just, I, I just think back uh, through all the children and giving invitations and leading and seeing tears streaming down their face in places and broken homes and getting to pray with these kids whose parents are, are in jail and prison and many different circumstances. So if you're a Sunday school teacher or a youth leader, you get to write I like to hold up a piece of paper as kind of a visual. You get to write on this child's life. If this is the book of a, of a child's life, you get to write something on there. And you usually get an hour, maybe two hours a week, you know, to do that. But on, when you look at the rest of the piece of paper, you know, if I fold one corner here, and that may represent what you get, the world gets to write on the rest of the book of that child's life. So what are you writing on the child's life? What are you filling into them? Are you pouring into them the gospel and teaching them the Bible when you get an opportunity? Or are you having them just do things in Sunday school, you know, color pages or whatever? And I'm not trying to convict you of that. I'm just saying that we are given so little time to go and share the most important message, the message that saves people for all eternity and keeps them from going to hell. So you get a chance to ride on the children's life. You know, children nowadays don't know when you talk to them about God I can go in front of a class of kids uh, and start asking them do you know who God is well some of them have a little bit of idea and they're a little embarrassed to try to answer because they know they might give the wrong answer but uh, and I asked who God is who Jesus is and then I come to the sin question I ask them if they know the word sin and we have to almost completely reteach what the Bible says about sin boy it starts off in the very beginning, and it's all throughout, isn't it? You know, about sin. If it wasn't for sin, we wouldn't need a Savior, right? But we sinned, each and every one of us have sinned. So we have to teach the children, because the generation they're growing up in does not use the word sin for bad things. It's just bad things, or time out, or something like that. But at Child Evangelism, we focus on the Gospel. We don't give uh, book bags. Uh, we don't give clothing. Yeah, my church, uh, we, do, we do those things. I, I believe those are all necessary and Jesus taught those things. But Jesus said in John 6.35, he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus had just fed the multitude, the 5,000 plus women and children, and the people were chasing after him so they could get another loaf of bread. And Jesus said, you follow me because you ate of the loaves, you know, you want more loaves. But he was trying to tell them, look, you have a deeper problem in your life than meeting your physical need of being hungry. Jesus even said at one point, the, uh, the poor you always have with you. But he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall not thirst. We are reminded that sin is something that Jesus was trying to teach the people about. He fed them so that they would listen to the most important message and that they had sin in their life and they needed a Savior. They needed Him. He was saying, come to me, come to me. And the same message is for today. Uh, in, in, the book, in the book of Romans, 
uh, one of my favorite scriptures is talks about us going out and sharing the gospel. And it reminds us who we are, how God sees us when we actually take on this initiative to learn how to share the gospel and go somewhere and to share it. Uh, Paul writes, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is in, uh, in Romans 10, 13. And then, he, and then he asked these poignant questions. He asked about four or five questions in a row. He says, how will they call on him in whom they have never believed? And how are they to believe in him in whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. You see, that was an Old Testament scripture that Paul knew. Paul was asking the questions, and the same question goes out to us today. It's not about us or the power that we have or our inability to go out and be able to teach people the gospel. It's the powerful word of God when it's spoken out uh, to, to, to bring people to Christ, whether it's an adult or a youngster. In, in the book of Isaiah, God reminds us, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish all which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. And Matthew 7, 21 through 23, I was watching your sermon for last week and you had this. I had it in mine already too, but I don't know, that was taped a, a week or two ago. And, and it's kind of a scary verse when you look at Matthew 7, 21, because you see Jesus you know, people talking in there about, uh, Jesus is talking about people who knew about him, but he said they didn't know him. And that scares me because so many people in the world and so many even children are being taught uh, a, a so-called gospel. It's sort of what we call soft gospel. But Jesus taught about, uh, he said, don't, don't go out and don't listen to those people. Paul warned of people who would go out and teach false gospels. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And he goes on down and he talks about people who did all these things. Well, you know, it's, many of us go out and we do things and we do it in the name of the Lord or we think that we're trying to do things. But Jesus is saying that there are some who have done things all their life, but I don't know them. I don't know them. They had no personal relationship. Jesus was talking about a personal relationship. You know, it's from our head to know about Jesus is not enough. It says, in, uh, James says in, in verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 19, that even the demons believe and they shudder. Jesus was talking about a personal relationship. So at Child Evangelism Fellowship, we focus on the gospel. We teach boys and girls the truths about the Bible, and we counsel them in the Word of God so that they can believe on Jesus as their Savior. Hebrews 4.12 4, also tells us that uh, the Word is living and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word has the power. In Genesis 1, we see God creating with a powerful word of His spoken from His mouth. And we see that same spoken word discussed in John chapter 1. Jesus is that powerful spoken word. He is that word. The name of Jesus, not us. Many are offended at the name of Jesus. You know, this world is full of gods nowadays. It has many gods. But at the name of Jesus, the Bible tells us in Philippians 2.11, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And that is true. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess. So it is our task to go out and tell the children. Remember the power is in Jesus' name. People were casting out demons in Jesus' name and he didn't even know them. They weren't his. You know, so it's a powerful, powerful name. We don't really understand all that. We just know that at the name of Jesus, uh, every knee will bow. Will you go and teach the children in your local school to make a difference for Christ? Uh, you know, I told you about CMZ's club up there at Sherman Elementary. This county right now is very open to doing good news clubs. We can basically go into the school and ask. I know I have Dry Ridge Elementary School is starting a good news club. Sherman is kind of in the middle. And I just talked to Williamstown Baptist Church Pastor Friday, and I think they want to start a good news club in Williamstown. All of Grant County Schools could be teaching the gospel of Jesus there. I just want to close with this. You know, God has never told us at what age someone needs to believe in Jesus as Savior. 
But he has told us in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we teach that all means all. That's all that it means. It means everyone. And Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. Yes, separation from God for all eternity. And Isaiah 59.2, it says, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And you know, when I teach kids that and I put my hands like this and made a separation, they understand that. You can understand it. Your sins have made a separation between you and your God. And David says in 50, 51, or Psalm 51.5 that he was brought forth in iniquity and sin. We teach children the same as, as you know, as you've read your Bible, that we are born wanting to sin. Sin is very pervasive in our lives. That's why Jesus had to come. That's why he came to save us from our sins. And then the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, it says that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And then it says in the next verse that he appeared. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive right now. And before he went back to heaven, he commissioned uh, what we started with in Acts 1.8 to go and share the gospel throughout all the world. That's what Jesus said to do. But you know, if you don't know Jesus as your savior from sin, if you've never done that, uh, you can't really go and teach others how to do that. But I would love for this church to be able to start uh, doing a good news club at the school and start leading many. John 3.16 is my closing verse. This verse you see at basketball games, you see it at football games, you've seen it so many times that it has become numb uh, to even look at it. John 3.16, all of you can probably quote it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You know, this is what, what God, what we call a condition promise verse in the Bible. There's a condition here. It says, it says for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him. To believe is the condition that you must do. You must believe that he is the son of God. That he came from heaven to earth. He was born as a baby. Grew up to be a man. And was crucified on the cross. Gave his blood for you so that you could have your sins forgiven. When you believe that, it says, when you believe in Him, you should not perish, but have eternal life. You know what that means? Life forever and ever and ever and ever and ever with God, to live with God forever. He comes to live in you right now through the power of the Holy Spirit, helps you to live this life, and one day you will go and live with God forever. You know, the Bible is clear. All have sinned, and Jesus is the only one who can save us from the punishment of sin. The most important decision you will ever make is to believe your, your Savior from sin. Will you believe in Jesus today? If you have not believed, you can do that today. You guys, bow your heads with me and close your eyes for just a minute. Bow your heads and close your eyes. No one looking around. The Bible is clear that all have sinned and need a Savior. You know, some most important decision anyone can ever make in their life is to believe on Jesus as their Savior. And Lord, uh, I just pray for everyone here that if they have not believed, that they would do that. If you would like to believe on Jesus today as your Savior from sin for the first time, or you have questions for me, just show me by raising your hand. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this church, for the uh, more than an opportunity, Lord, just to be here to, to preach your word today.